this is GYG Peppa Tree and I have two planners here because I will be doing a giveaway with this set of goodies right here. So just keep watching. I know there are a lot of plan with me videos out there. However, I want you to see my thought process behind planning for the new month and how I set up and organize my formatting and everything inside of it so that it can be a very effective way to strategize and make sure that I meet all my goals for the month. So to start off in planning for the new month, this is my routine. For example, July is the new month and before I even start planning on July, I would go back to my June mission board and if you've seen my previous video, you'll understand um, more about my mission board. But Alongside the mission board, I also do reflection. And so at the end of the month, I would come in and write my reflection and I will use my experience from my reflection to guide me in the next step. So what happened here was we did go on a butterfly trail and what I discovered was that my youngest son, he was very intrigued by rocks. And I've always known that he collected rocks, but I didn't really understand how he looked at them with such um, interest. So um, it made me realize that maybe he might have an interest for geology because he does study very closely the characteristics of the rocks and uh, just the features of the rocks. And so this prompted me for a another direction to take in July. And what I did too was also I observed how my twins and my oldest son, they've grown so much within the last month alone. So June was a month of a lot of memories and a lot of fun. And um, it was a really fabulous month for our family. And now in July, we will be focusing on growth. And so that's why my theme here says grow and I have a little blooming flower right there. And based off of my reflection, what I decided to do was still continue on with the reading. So I had reading down here and I'm continuing on with the reading, except for that through the reflection, I discovered that we need a more structured time to do our reading because if I just allow my boys to pick their reading time, they don't really stick to it. And devotional time, we will continue from there. So I have it down here, but we're continuing it here. But then the little tweaking that I added in after I reflected was that I wanted my oldest son to partake in leading some of the uh, devotional time. And that way he will have a chance to learn how to prepare for a study and to be able to facilitate it. It will give him some good learning experiences. And then based off of my youngest son's interest in rocks, it led me to really um, have this desire to focus on uh, nurturing their growth, whether their passion is in arts, whether it's in rocks, whether it's in anything else. So I listed all of our family members name here just so that I can make sure that everybody does um, identify their passion. And my husband and I, we both know our passions. So we're pretty much set there. And we do have a habit of nurturing it. My oldest son, we have been talking about different things that he might be interested in. So that's in the works. And with my twins, Dante and Saber, they've always been into art. So we will be going to an art museum so that they will have more exposure to different types of arts. And for my youngest son, Malachi, I'm thinking I might have to order him some geology books and look up places to go that might have, you know, amazing, I don't know, observations for different types of rock formation. I don't know. I'm going to have to look into that, but at least this prompts me with something to uh, focus on when it comes to nurturing their personal development. And as far as our theme for growing uh, in, in the one-time event section here, I did put the art museum down and we will continue to uh, grow through our relationships with our extended families. So the boys will write snail mail to their cousins. And uh, as far as strengthening the family, growing the strength of it, we will be having a day to go golfing and swimming. So now that I'm done with the reflection, which helped me come up with a more chiseled down mission board for the following month. Any tweaking that I had to do, any adjustments, I did that already. Anything new that was added, I added that already. So now 
I'm ready to go to my project tracking sheet. And my project tracking sheet, and this is the thing I love about Mom Bee Planners, is the ability to just take out the inserts and work with them. So I'm putting these two side by side. My June is here, my July is here. And anything that I have that wasn't completed that I need to move over over to the next month I just move them over and anything new that I'm adding like for example I'm adding these um, new projects here it comes from my series of events because it may take more than just one day to work on them so I place them here and then I can just put away the June now and I will be working off of this sheet when I'm working on my weekly planning and I will show you that in a minute how this sheet works with the weekly planner pages Okay, now to the monthly spread. The way I handle the monthly spread is, well, before I even start working on it, I just want to show you how it looks like. And usually it will look like this with a bunch of little sticky notes with uh, things that I've scheduled in. And if things don't get moved around, then they just stay as is. But if they move around, I can just lift them up and reposition them in the boxes that they need to go in but once i'm ready to plan then i make these more into the theme that i'm working on so for example these items were on those sticky notes and i just um, made them flow into this uh, this carnival slash circusy theme and so after i put in all of my pre-scheduled events then i would go into my mission board and pull out all of my one-time events and place them onto my monthly calendar so my art museum visit would go here and then um, snail mail day goes here and then um, the day of family outing would go here and so you see how I'm actually taking those goals on the mission board and implementing it into my monthly calendar and the thing is that you can write all the goals that you want to write down, but if you don't actually take it and implement it into your calendar, then you won't work on it. So this is how I'm actually applying it into my practice. And once I get all the monthly information down correctly, then I move on to my first week of the month. And for this first week, what I do is I pull out all the information from the monthly calendar. So this is from the 29th through the 5th, and so I would go over here to June and grab the important events that are happening on the 29th and the 30th, and I would place them here. Or actually, the 29th um, event was my son's birthday, so I placed it down here. And then anything from the 1st through the 5th, then I will refer back to the 1st through the 5th on the July calendar. And I will pull all the important information and place them in the appropriate boxes. That way I don't forget any important events and all the major stuff are already in position for me to work off of. Now after that, I did mention to you that I will refer to this project sheet when I plan my weekly calendar. And that is because anything that is from the 1st through the 5th, what I would do is I would just focus on anything that is from the 1st through the 5th on these columns. And these are my due dates here. This whole highlighted area, well, all the highlighted boxes are my projected due dates. And so um, what I do is I just focus at a glance right here all these due dates and it will be my project vocabulary my reading schedule needs to be implemented by them my devotional schedule and all the identification of the passions that we want to work on uh, we'll have to identify it by the fifth and so I would take these information and I will populate them over here so that I will be able to work on them before they're due so this is how I use this project tracking sheet to make sure that I apply it to my weekly calendar and really work on them. And then once all the monthly events on the calendar have moved over to the weekly calendar and all the monthly tracking uh, project sheet information has been moved over to that week's calendar, then what I do is I fill it in with all the other information. And I start off with this top row right here. And this top row are my um, top three to do's and I'm very 
hard on myself if I don't complete all of the tasks. So I have learned that if I just make sure I complete the top three, then everything else that I want to complete can go in the second row and I can check them off. And if I don't get to them, at least I know I did my top three. It helps me uh, differentiate my priorities. Like these are the must do and then these are the will do. And then um, the bottom boxes are for um, personal stuff, family stuff. So basically top priority and then following priority and then family is not their priority but it is its own section because I have a focus on the family that I want to be able to nurture as well and then on the side column right here it says notes but then what I did was I covered it up with this header that says good habits and what I hope to do is to just pick two or three good habits that I want to focus on that week and so there you have it you have this weekly spread and I know it does seem like it takes a few steps just to get to the weekly spread of the um, the first weekly spread of the month but then I find that if you don't do it this way you end up planning in a really reactive manner and what I mean by that is that you get all these incoming demands you put them all on your spread and you prioritize them but the thing is that when do you ever really get to work on your own priorities then when do you really get to make sure that your goals that are on that mission board is fully implemented into your everyday life and so my whole purpose of planning in this manner is so that I can be very intentional about paving the path to my goals paving the path to my dream life and making sure that at the end of the year, I'm not looking back and wondering where has the year gone by. And that's because I lived intentionally instead of living reactively. I took this out, but I'm just putting it back in. And this is my little inspirational tidbit, yet it also prompts me to remember to jot down any memories that I want to treasure for this week. And um, also date it as well. And when I'm ready to scrapbook, I would already have the date and the um, fun little memories. And I can also use these elements here, like the hexagon, the paperclip, and these cards to be a part of my uh, scrapbooking page. All right, and now time for the giveaway, yay! Okay, quickly, there are some rules. First of all, you have to be 18 and over to enter. Secondly, this is only open to the United States and Canada. And third of all, keep in mind that this giveaway will close on July 15 at midnight. So um, that's also central time because that's my time zone. And afterwards, I will be drawing from the list of qualified entries to see who the winner is. Now to enter, all you need to do is be a subscriber. So if you have not yet, go ahead and click that subscribe button because um, if I find that you're not a subscriber, I'm sorry, you cannot win this. Secondly, you just need to give this video a quick thumbs up. And thirdly, you just need to comment below and let me know what kind of planner person you are. Are you a newbie? Are you a seasoned planner? And if you like to decorate in your planner and what kind of planner you're currently using or what kind of planner you're hoping to use in the future. And um, this is what you'll get if you win. Uh, I've included these two booklets of sticky notes. One says, listen up, and it's really cute on the inside because it says, have to do this don't want to do this, avoiding it, get it over with and work on it. And for this one, it says, don't forget, get it done, maybe tomorrow, maybe never, sometime and right now. And I love how this is in a booklet format because you could just put it in your purse and when you get a phone call, you could just pull it out and take your quick notes, pull off that sticky sheet and put it into the dashboard of your planner. And I'm also including the Happy Planner uh, Mombi sticker sheets right here. There are six of them in this pack. And I'm also giving away this Happy Planner. And from what I understand, this is a really sought out design because it's just adorable the way they designed it on the inside. So good luck on your entry for this giveaway and have a great day. Bye.